What's up everybody? Phil Easy here. Nice to see you today. What a beautiful day. I've got sun in the garden. I hope you guys are doing well. Hope everything's going good. I thought I'd put together a video today just on what I'm up to. Super busy time, so I'm taking on a few tasks today. A couple topics to cover. Just really brief on each one. Um, if you enjoy the video, please hit the subscribe button, the notification bell. Hit that thumbs up, that helps me out, shows it to more people, bell icon, all of it helps. So first thing I'm gonna talk about is the garlic. And I did a spacing experiment. You guys probably know, maybe know that. If you don't, check out the video above. I've really reduced my spacing this year. I've, I've gone from a seven to eight inch space in between each garlic plant down to, it looks like it's about three, I believe it was that I did here. And I'm kind of looking at it, and I'm just gonna give you a bit of an update on my thoughts on so far what's happening. So really, it grew healthy early, it's growing well now. I don't know for sure until the very end how those uh, actual garlic bulbs are gonna turn out, but uh, one of the things I have noticed that is a bit of a challenge with putting the garlic this close together is that I can't see as easily into the inside of the bed to see if there's a lot of weeds or anything going on. It's a, just a green mass. It's great in the sense that lots of garlic, but again, I can't visually get an eyeball right to the ground through all this. So what that's doing, I've noticed, is it's, uh, it's, it's deterring me from weeding the garlic and that's one of the very important things we got to do with our garlic is keep the beds weeded uh, they don't like competition like this is a perfect example look at how long this has gotten this snuck up on me i should have had this weeded a long time ago check it out and so there's several examples of where that's happened so this might be one of the well, it's, it's one of the cons, one of the negatives of putting your garlic so close together. Weeding as well, reaching in is a lot more challenging without knocking the plants themselves and causing potential disruption. So those are the two negatives I've picked up on so far uh, as a result of putting my garlic closer. I'm still gonna wait and see how the actual product turns out or how what our volumes are. Uh, to make some final decisions on whether or not I keep going this way or not. I forgot to mention the scapes. That was the whole point of me bringing this video up. So what we've got is the scapes are the flowers that are coming out of the top of the garlic. Every year they'll pop up at a certain time and they'll start to do a curl. There's a, bun a couple different ideas on when exactly to pick your scapes. Some people believe that if you let it do the full curl, it's at the right time. You have more scape. The advantage of that is you have more actual garlic, garlic scape. Here, I'll show you. This is, there's the scape. It's the flower on top. You'll have more scape weight, so you can use uh, more. You'll, you'll be able to make more pesto, use more of these. And if you sell this stuff, you'll be able to sell a bit more weight and volume. However, some people believe that the longer you leave the scapes on, the more energy is going into your flower, the less energy is going into the actual bulb itself, and you're compromising what you get up top, you lose down below. I actually don't know how much of a difference that makes, so I'm going to do a bit of an experiment. I like to do that. I'll do both. I will leave some consistently that have the scapes on until they get long, quite long, curly, and I'll take others and I will get them off earlier maybe than I normally would. I know I have let some go all the way to get the clones. That's uh, the, these will, this will turn into a flower if you let it mature and it will have a whole bunch of little miniature little garlic cloves on it. Those are the bulbils, another video up top on that. But I've left those to harvest more and you end up with very little bulb in the bottom when it puts all of its energy up top. So I'm just curious on the idea behind waiting for the curl or not waiting for the curl. I'll do both and I'll give you an update at the end of the season and we'll see if we can tell if there's any difference. The other thing going on in the garden is in the potatoes. So we've got the no-dig potatoes here underneath the hay. 
what I need to do with them and I'll be doing shortly within the next few days is I want to and should put another layer of hay mulch on and the reason why I want to do that now is because these plants aren't too tall yet when they get tall they're gonna fill out and I'm not gonna be able to drop the hay in as easy there's still space in here for me to get the hay in so that's one of the reasons why it's really important for me to do this in the next couple days the other reason I found that if you don't do a second layer it doesn't protect the potatoes as well as it could from the sunlight as they mature and when you get to the end there's a potential for a few more green potatoes and green potatoes you're not supposed to eat what I read so this is just gonna help if I do the mulching keep it dark in there and keep the potatoes from getting exposed to the light and because that is what causes them to turn green and that's what all the hillings all about that everyone talks about that you may have read or seen um, hilling doesn't actually improve the volume of potatoes I've done many experiments over the years with hilling with malt with straw hilling with soil no hilling right next to each other and everything and I found that there's no difference at all go figure so the last thing I'm gonna talk about and do today well not the last thing I'll do today but last task that I'm going to record and talk about is going to be with the tomatoes. So we're in the greenhouse. Things are progressing quite fast now. As you can see, I haven't been keeping up. So what I'm focusing in on here, and hopefully it shows up nicely on the camera, but I'm trying to focus in on this in front of my hand here. We've got some shoots coming out, quite a few of them, at every single... Ooh, there's a big one. The size of that shoot. So all of that needs to come off. I need to aggressively prune these already uh, and that'll allow the energy to be directed towards the top center of the plant. These are a vining variety of tomato. Uh, that's why the pruning is very critical. If you have a bush variety, pruning is not as important. But these ones I will be training up these metal stakes you can see. So what I'm going to go through now is pruning all of these different ones and I'm just going to go through with my fingers and literally snap each one of these off. If they're too big, I will grab the scissors for that. So make sure you prune your tomatoes, everyone. If you happen to have the vining variety and you're starting to see the growth in the nooks of the plant. So I'm bottom pruning some of the lower foliage on the tomato plants that have got quite a bit more growth up top. I'm especially going after the leaves that are touching the ground or the soil. They can uh, harbor insects and disease and all sorts of stuff. So that's the first ones that come off, but I wait until the tomatoes are about a foot tall, and then I'll prune the bottom couple leaves off. We'll prune a little bit up as we go during the season. There you go, everybody. Just thought I'd take you on a quick little what's what am I up to today? What are some of the things that I'm dealing with? And I just wanted to share some thoughts around some of the different tasks I was taking on. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope there was some value in this for you. Thanks for checking me out. Please hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and uh, smash that thumbs up. That gets this video shown to more people. Helps me out a lot too. So again, have a great day. Thanks for checking me out. We'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye. Well, there you have it. Wow, that was a rough start. There you have it. Poof! Twice. There you have it, everybody. A little bit of what's happening in the garden side of Phil Easy. That sounds weird, too. <laughs>